So we know how to predict from our model. So that is RGR, that is our model, linear regression model, RAGMO. And from RAG, we are able to predict from our new data that is expressed. So make sure you know that our model REGR is unknown to our X test data. So that's why we are providing a new data and from which it will be providing Y product. That is completely new. And then we are going to compare Y product with Y test. We will just look how close they are to each other. This will give me a better intuition about all of these, like how good of a model R is. So for that, we have various evaluation matrices that we are going to learn in our next video. But before that, let's look into some of the other ways from which you can also visualize your answers. So first of all, we know how to do the prediction for all the data in X test. But let's look into if we want to predict for a sim single data. Okay, so let's do REG dot predict and inside of it we'll pass square bracket inside a square bracket and we will pass the value something. So we are having SAL. So let's in look into SAL. So for 33.50, it should be predicting somewhere in between uh, 8 to 9, I guess. 8.5 something for 33.50. Let's check. 33.50. So yeah, we are getting 8.42, which looks quite well. Now let's visualize this. So let's visualize this first on training set, how well our model did in the training set. So let's plot a scatter plot. And over here we will pass X train and then we will pass Y train. So this is our training example. And in this, what our linear regression model has done is it has just put out a line somewhere in between. So we will check how good of a line it has provided and how close our line is to this, all of these points. So for that, let's plt.plot. And in this, we will be passing our X test and Y print. So uh, let's change the colors of everything. So let's change the color to black. Color is equal to K. Okay. So we can see that our model has done quite a good thing in the training examples. Let's look the same thing for our test. Okay. So we have X test and we have Y test. So let's check it out. Now let's run this. So this is our train, uh, test set okay, from which our model is to look into how good of a data or how good of a line our data has been able to provide. So this is the test set which we are having and this is a solution. So we can see that we have done quite a good job over here. We are able to predict somewhere of in the between itself so we have the ordinary ordinary square method from which we have got this center line and from this we can say that we have a pretty good model okay now you can just do a side by side comparison of all the y pred and y test for that the code will be something like this we can just use zip function so for x and y so what i mean is so we have y pred so we have an array and for y test, we have an array. Okay, so first value is 6.4. For that, first value of y test is 8.26. For that, our model predicted 6.4, which is quite near, but still a bit far away. So what we can do is to have it side by side is we can just create a zip from the zip function in zip. Let's pass y test and let's pass our y thread Oops. and let's print x comma y. So we have this. So let's give a separation to this from a single tab should be quite well. So slash t. 
let's give one more slash t yeah so this looks good so for uh, well our model should be predicting somewhere near 8.26 it predicted 6.4 then for 7.53 it was 8.0 so which i guess is very good where it should be predicting 8.6 so it is 8.2 so you can see that our model has done quite a good job for 11.6 it has predicted 11.3 which is again a really good example of how good our model is for 5.54 5.85 Again, somewhere we are having a bit of a difference, like over here we have 10.14 and over here we have 12. So yeah, this is one of the way by which from which uh, the visualization you can look into and you can just get out how of a best fitting line you are having. But think about the situation where you are having more than one columns that is for multivariate. So for that, you cannot actually plot a graph something like this and looking uh, something like this is not quite possible for so many values right now we have 500 values so it's quite possible but when our data increases it's not quite possible for that we need different evaluation matrices so in our next video we are going to learn about evaluation matrices what are their needs and why do we need them so so we already have catched up in our intuition session about a bit about how does evaluation matrices help us and what exactly is a cost function and why we need to decrease the cost function as much as possible. Similarly, we have evaluation matrices. So let's catch up in the next video and we'll start with that.